Hello there and welcome to the Sydney Entertainment Centre on a big occasion down here in Australia with the World Heavyweight Championship tonight to be contested between the title holder Maurice Smith and he goes in against the Australian Stan the Man Longanides. That'll be preceded by the Australian Super Light Heavyweight Contest and just up in front of that some martial arts demonstrations and to take you through that here's Trevor Munnery. The opening music for tonight's program is performed by Mr. Riley Lee, who is playing a shaku hachi, which is a Japanese flute. Act one on tonight's program will be a Special Forces unarmed combat demonstration and the participants in this display are all Australian Commandos or Green Berets. A trademark of uh, Sifu Rick Spain is, his, of course, his great kicking techniques. Rick is also performing tonight a butterfly swords routine. The butterfly swords are a traditional Wing Chun weapon and the blades date back to the Ming Dynasty. Butterfly swords were developed by Shaolin monks and were originally used for self-defense. There were no killing strikes with the Shaolin monks until the Manchus ruled China when they outlawed weapons and martial arts and destroyed the Shaolin temples. Khan is more than 500 years old and was developed by the Japanese samurai during their feudal era. Phil Hinshelwood teaches other police survival tactics and weapons training and has competed in national karate competition. program will be a synchronized carter display involving Mr. Scott Brown of 4th Dan Black Belt in Shirinji Ru style and Scott is also a 5th Dan in Koshiki who has been training since 1973. <laughs> Scott's instructor is the 9th Dan Masayuki Kukan Hisataka who was also the youngest graded 8th Dan in the world. Scott is performing a Koshiki Kusan Kukata with Miss Tracy Tyler, who is 19 years old and a first degree black belt.
Sifu Chan Chuk Fei practices the Jin Wu Kun Kung Fu style and comes from a family of Kung Fu masters. He has been studying Kung Fu for more than 30 years and has also studied Thai boxing, Goshen Ru and kickboxing. staff was developed as a fighting weapon by Buddhist monks in China more than 2,000 years ago. It is traditionally six foot long and approximately one inch thick and is made from Japanese white oak which is particularly strong. Scott Brown is one of the finest exponents of the bow staff kara in Australia and has traveled extensively throughout Southeast Asia where he has traveled under a number of grand masters. The demonstrator in the red protective clothing is Geoffrey Harrison, a first degree black belt and an international Australian lightweight champion. His opponent in the white armour is Rodney Winner, also a first degree black belt and a member of the New South Wales State Karate Team. Koshiki full contact sparring is an aged form of testing an exponent's ability to fight in a full contact atmosphere without the harsh realities of fighting where no punches are pulled. Participants will be Mr. Kim McRae, a second and Taekwondo instructor, who has been studying the style for more than 17 years. Accompanying Kim in this display is Mr. Bill B. Andrew Welsh, who has been training with him for four years and who has an extensive experience in karate and is the current Australian heavyweight Kashiki champion. Kim McRae's Taekwondo school has been known for innovative demonstrations which blend a mixture of spectacular techniques with hard-hitting humour to show his unique interpretation of Taekwondo. Hey man, didn't you read the script? The script. It says here, I hit you, you fall down. 
No, 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 no. Mine says, you hit me, I hit you back. Give me a break. Oh, oh come on. Now we have on stage now a young lady called Catherine Hull, who is also one of Kim McRae's students, Taekwondo students. And Catherine has been studying for four years and is also a first degree black belt. That brings us to Act 9 on tonight's program, which is a Kung Fu staff form demonstration performed by Sifu Randy Sullivan Bennett. Randy Bennett has been studying martial arts for over 20 years and is a former US Open Kung Fu champion. I'm staying.
stage now is a unique brick breaking display which has only been performed twice before in the world. This unique demonstration will be performed by Mr. Les Hanos, who is the chief instructor and founder of Zen Bukan Kempo Karate. And he will be assisted by Mr. Jim Sheedy, who is the regional instructor of the Australian Freestyle Taekwondo Academy. Les Hanos practices the Zen Bukan Kempo style, which means mind training center. It is his own style and is a combination of Jiu Jitsu and Kempo. Its main features are elbows, knees, and is ideal for street defense. There are clubs in Australia, Austria, Hungary, and France. On stage now, we have young...
Billy Sulos in front of the in in charge of this first bout for the Australian Super Light Heavyweight title, and it's between uh, Peter Blumson, who is the current WKA Australian uh, Cruiserweight Champion, and uh, Clinton O'Hello. O'Hello, just 19 years of age. Blumson regarded as one of the very best in Australia at 25. Now Blumson is fighting out of the blue corner in the black trunks, and uh, Clinton O'Hello out of the red corner in the red trunks. There he is there, oh hello. He's only five foot ten and conceding something like four inches in height to uh, Peter Blumson. Joining me ringside is Trevor Munnery, who will add the expert comments through both these bouts, the first of which is between Blumson, who's had 34 fights, one draw, and Clinton oh hello, just the three. He's been beaten three times. And Trevor, uh, you were telling me earlier that this fellow Blumson is so good that nobody really wants to fight him. Yeah, that's quite true, Ray. Uh, Peter Blomson is the current Australian Cruiserweight champion. He's stepping down a little in weight to win another title here. But mind you, Clinton Ohalo, he's a good fighter. His brother, Mitch Ohala, only a month ago knocked out the Commonwealth heavyweight champion, Grant Barker, in a non-title fight. And uh, believe you me, Clinton, uh, if he gets in close, I think he'll land a couple of big ones on the Peter's jaw. So Blomson getting off a couple of combinations early in the first round 10 by two minutes Blumson comes from um, Sydney he was born in northern New South Wales that's the fellow in the black uh, trunks oh, hello was born in Rabaul in New Guinea and uh, works out of Brisbane trained by Mick Waterton and uh, a couple of swinging kicks by oh hello both right and left a combination but Blumson not perturbed by it. Left jab by O'Hello found the mark. So too did the left uh, re retaliation from Blumson. And again the left jab by Blumson. Then the uh, the swinging right kick by O'Hello. Blumson works away to the top with uh, a fistic barrage. Then with the right kick. O'Hello with a tentative approach with that left kick. But not a lot of power in it. Then a swinging right kick by Ohello. He shaped to, to follow with the, the left. Blumson working away with left and right jabs. This has been a good start by Clinton Ohello, Ray. Uh, notoriously, Peter Blumson is a slow starter, but Clinton's really jumped on top of him here. He's giving away a lot, of, a lot in size. He's giving away a lot in experience. And I think the youngster's not overawed by this occasion. He's going to take this fight right up to Peter Blumson. And uh, if he can get past six rounds with Peter, which no one else has been able to do for a long time, I think he's in with a big shot tonight. Blumson just getting a warning from uh, referee Sulos. The bell ending round one. Kick and duck and come up with an overhand. He's just jabbing you every time you kick him. Stand up straight. Move, step off. You've got to throw him. Be confident in yourself. You know you can throw the kicks. Fourth round. And Trevor Munnery, how have you got it at the moment? Uh, oh, would you have it uh, two rounds at least to Blumson? Oh, I think Peter Blumson's won definitely two of the first three rounds. I'd like to see Clinton O'Hallo moving in a little closer and working on Peter's legs. At the moment, he's standing there. He's a bit of a target, Clinton. He, he's not ducking, he's not weaving. And he's certainly paying the penalty. Already they're swelling under his uh, right eye. And uh, as soon as Peter sees that, he'll start to work on that more in the fight. He's not the most agile of uh, boxers. He's Clinton O'Hello. He has persevered with that, uh, that right kick, trying to work away at that thigh muscle on the left leg of Blumson, but Will Blumson with a high kick, a turning uh, right kick. And again with the right front kick from O'Hello, but it's falling well short of the mark at the moment. There's a, uh, a reverse kick, a rear kick by Blumson. First one we've seen in the fight so far. I don't think it did much damage. Ohello tries to hook Blumson up then with the, his right leg before getting off a double barrel shot. Blumson though, keen to work him away and uh, fight him at long range. And again, a big turning kick by Blumson. He does have that uh, tremendous advantage of being much the taller, more rangy than Ohello. And that right kick and then that right over the top, twice delivered. Good work by Blumson. Ohello in a bit of trouble as they go back towards the neutral corner, but they were three good shots by Blumson. The kick and then two punches, the combination left-right.
coming up to the end of the fourth round. And Blumson again with that uh, left turning kick and working away with left and rights to O'Hello. O'Hello doesn't seem to have too many answers, Trevor. No, he doesn't, Ray, but I think the class and experience of Peter Blumson is definitely showing through here. I think the youngster's in a lot of trouble, Ray. Uh, I think if it goes another round, uh, Clinton O'Hello will have done well tonight. There's the bell, the end of round four, again for Blumson. You got me? Just flick him and move. Keep kicking. You're standing there waiting. All right. Back on the ground. Round five. And uh, as Trevor Munnery pointed out, a swelling under the right eye of O'Hello, who's taken quite a bit of punishment, particularly in rounds two, three, and four. Blumson, we've got him scored at least as winning um, three of the four rounds so far contested. Blumson in those black shorts. This is a very game showing uh, Ray by Clinton O'Hello. He's uh, certainly giving this fight everything he's got. Only well, seven years the junior of uh, Peter Blumson. I said coming into the fight uh, that I, d I doubted if he'd be overawed by the occasion and he's certainly taken the fight up to Peter. Hey, I don't think he has the class or perhaps the experience that Peter Blumson does, but uh, look, he's hanging in there and uh, who knows, it only takes one punch on the jaw, Ray, and it could all be over. Good left kick by Blumson. That found, uh, found the jaw of O'Hello. O'Hello, uh, not very mobile. I, I think that uh, he's probably got to uh, put a bit more work into his delivery. He's prepared to stand there and take it from Blumson. And being short as he is and giving away reach he's got to uh, become more agile and move more but uh, he's very flat-footed very much a straight up and down uh, kickboxer he took that left flush on the uh, on the chin didn't worry him too much he can take plenty of punishment he's prepared to take two or three to give one but that ratio isn't working out for him at the moment good left kick by Blumson they both attack with the left uh, turning kick and a right turning kick by Blumson left right combination oh good left jab that landed flush on O'Hello's uh, nose. O'Hello uh, tries to fight back, but uh, a very good passage of the fight there for Blumson. They both uh, lead and both connect. Blumson swings a wild right. That also found the mark. Oh, uh, O'Hello. Got a left jab onto the chin of Blumson, almost sent him over the rope. There's the bell, the end of round five. And again, one would think that it went to Blumson. There's that eye of O'Hello swollen and uh, causing both the fighter and, of course, the seconds quite a deal of bother. They say that Clinton O'Hello has an iron jaw and it's certainly being put to the test tonight by Peter Blumson. Well, he's given him his best shot. This is Blumson's corner we're looking at now. He's, uh, he's hit O'Hello with flurry of both uh, punches and kicks. But the, the youngster's still there, hanging in as we come up to round seven. Blumson just keeping O'Hello at bay with the the left front kick. Then he uh, oh, the kick by O'Hello to the inside of uh, the thigh on the right leg of uh, Blumson. That shook him for a while. His gloves actually touched the canvas. The referee just uh, wiping the gloves and they go back into combat again now. I think, Ray, that was an ideal opportunity for Clinton O'Hallo to move in on top of Peter Blumson. He hasn't done enough of that in the fight. He certainly had uh, Blumson in trouble and the opportunity slipped and now Peter's experience is tying him up again. So back towards the blue corner, that of Blumson, and Blumson working the way upstairs to O'Hello. Left kick by O'Hello, gets him out of a bit of trouble. And a warning against uh, Blumson. And the referee actually awarding a penalty, I think. Yes, it's a penalty. And a point comes from Blumson's tally. Referee ordering judges to take a point from Blumson. Oh, hello to the canvas. 
Right kick by Blumson. Put him down, but they come back to centre ring again. Punching power of Blumson has probably been the feature of this uh, contest. Both fighters working away to the thigh muscles with their kicks. Occasional front kick from Blumson and then invariably follows it up with left and right. Oh, hello, having a much better round this uh, this round. And uh, if there's a round to go to Ohello, it may well have been round seven. Much better round, round seven for Clinton Ohello. And uh, as I said, coming up to the end of the round, if he, if he has won a round, it was round seven. We're coming up to round eight now. with the left and tries to come with a combination kick. Blumson retaliates with a right and a left kick and then he clubs him with the right over the top. Front kick by Blumson. Again follows it with left-right combination. I think Peter Blumson may be a little bit surprised about how much punishment Clinton O'Hello can take, Ray. Well, it could well be that it's uh, becoming frustrating to Blumson because uh, he, has, he has hit him with plenty of... Uh, his better shots, but it doesn't seem to be having too much of an effect. There he is getting through with a right uppercut. Gets him with left right, then goes in with the right kick. Front left kick. And Ohello forced to cover up just uh, for a moment or two as they come back to centre ring. Blumson pushing Ohello away. Then a front kick. And uh, again the referee giving Blumson a warning. Middle stages of round eight. Oh, hello now, with a good combination of right-left kicks. Oh, that was dangerous for him. He turned his back on his opponent. That's something you don't do. Left-turning kick by Ohello. Blumson clubs him with that right over the top. A wild punch, but it went flush straight through the clubs of Ohello, and he took it on the mouth. But again, Ohello, showing no, uh, no sign of heading towards the canvas. And Blumson gets off a big, big right-turning kick, then a reverse left. But again, oh hello, stands there like a pillar and prepared to take it as Blumson continues to pile up what would seem to be an unassailable lead on points. And again, a warning for Blumson from the referee as we take the overhead shot. Looking down on the square ring, the bell sounds, the end of round eight. And again, around to Peter Blumson. Touch of glamour added to the night. And there's Peter Blumson's corner with the uh, the seconds and his trainer, Michael Sphinx, in fact, is in charge of um, Peter. And they're doing plenty of talking, trying to encourage Peter to give them more. But uh, as Trevor Munnery said, it's quite likely that um, he's surprised, if not shocked, by the ability of Ohello to take his punishment and still come back for more. Second last round. Round nine. Ten by two. Oh, and now Hello got off a left turn, a right turn. Took the legs from underneath uh, Blumson. No count applied. Blumson up to his feet very quickly. And oh, Hello comes out at the start of round nine, throwing plenty of leather. He knows that he's got to knock him out to win it. He's doing plenty of work now. So a great start to round nine for Clinton O'Hello. Blumson a little bit shocked by it too. Once again, Ray, Clinton O'Hello, he hurts Peter Blumson, but then he withdraws. He doesn't get co on with the attack. Uh, it's a pity he didn't attack a little bit hard also in the early rounds. He needs to continue the aggression for longer periods of time. And Blumson does give the appearance that maybe if somebody did persist and, and keep up that aggression, for longer periods, he, he might uh, he might be able to take too much of it. Oh, hello! 
well behind on points, but a very good start to round nine. In fact, we're coming up towards the close of round nine now. And again, Blumson getting his composure back and uh, delivering a big right. Referee tells him to break. And uh, warning Blumson about the use of the head. Oh, hello, covers up as Blumson tries to push that left lead through again. Both uh, fighters with a front kick as they make their way into closer quarters. And uh, Blumson made to miss badly with left and right, right punches. So this has been a much better round for O'Hello and uh, he could well be in front on the uh, judges' scorecard for this round anyway. There's the bell. One round to go. Probably O'Hello's round, but Blumson's still well in front on points. Well, I think this has been a, a very courageous effort by young Clinton O'Hello here tonight, Ray. I think a lot of fight experts were predicting that it wouldn't go three or four rounds. It's gone the distance. Uh, I think young Clinton deserves all the praise in the world, and I think he'll uh, definitely be back to fight another night, that's for sure. You don't have to be uh, an intellectual uh, follower of kickboxing to know what they're saying to Clinton O'Hello. You've got to go out there and put him away, put him to sleep. Send him to the canvas and leave him there if you're going to win this. And uh, they start this uh, round, the last, at a ferocious speed. Good exchange at centre ring. Blumpton tries to get on a kick, a turning kick, follows it through with the left lead. O'Hello tries to work him into the corner again. He turns his back on his opponent. High right kick from Blumpson. O'Hello getting away from that neutral corner, working his way towards centre ring. Tries to hook that kick of Blumpson's. Oh, and a good left kick by um, O'Hello. Blumpson with a front kick, follows it in with those long arms poking out the left jab, but O'Hello is able to counter it. They come away from the blue corner. And on the ropes, O'Hello works his way back towards the centre of the ring. Midway through round 10. This is for the Australian Super Light Heavyweight title. The title vacant. Blumson getting off a right over the top, left across the top, and then he continues with left, right. And O'Hello taking all of those. And uh, Blumson, as far as punches landed are concerned, would be, I imagine, a mile in front. Oh, I'd say so too, Ray. I think he's, uh, he's got more experience than Clinton O'Hello, and uh, the youngster shouldn't be ashamed. He's put up a great effort, but I think Peter's got a touch of class. He is world-class, Peter Blumson. Blumson forces O'Hello back towards the neutral corner. But O'Hello's going to take it right down, right down to that final bell. He mightn't win the title, but Blumson will know that he's been in a fight. Oh, I'd say this has been one of the hardest fights for Peter Blumson in a long time. There's the bell. And boxers embrace the end of 10. We'll wait for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, the judges' decision. They scored 97, 85, 99, 84, 98, 86. The winner in the blue corner, Peter Blumson. Jimmy Barnes presenting the belt to the winner, Peter Bumpson. Clinton O'Hello, the runner-up, ladies and gentlemen. Please give him a warm round of applause. Your new champion, Peter Bumpson. With me is triple world boxing champion, Jeff Fennick, national hero down here. He's at the kickboxing ringside tonight. Maurice Smith, Stan Long tonight. Is, you, you've seen Stan the man fight a bit, Jeff. Yeah, quite a few times. A few friends of mine, Maury Ducini and Doug Kefford from Melbourne, uh, help with the preparations of Stan, and uh, he's looking quite good. What about the, uh, the, the title holder, Maurice Smith? Uh, he's, he's much taller, about four inches taller. Yeah, I just had a talk to Maurice, and to, uh, he, he reminds me a little bit of myself in the dressing room. He's very cool, very calm. He's talking about anything. Uh, I'm sure the fight's in the back of his mind, but he looks very, very relaxed, and you know, I haven't seen him, but I've heard a bit about him. I think it all spells for a great fight here. Which way do you think it'll go? Well, obviously, uh, I hope Stan wins. He's Australian, and if he can do that, I'll be proud of him. Well, this capacity crowd's on its feet now, Ray Warren. 
fairly easy to see who they've come to cheer for. The Aussie, number one contender for the world heavyweight crown, Stan the Man Longanides, and he's soaking up the time. Standing ovation waiting for Stan the Man when he comes into the Sydney Entertainment Centre. Stands the Australian South Pacific, United States and Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion and of course the undisputed number one contender. That might be hard to fathom in the minds of some considering that the World Heavyweight Champion Marie Smith comes from Washington State yet Stan the Man holds the, uh, the US title. Now here he comes, Stan the Man Longaniti. He's back there somewhere. Parade of the youngsters with the, the belts so proudly held by Longanides. In fact, there he is now. A professional fight record of 21 1 with 16 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the number one contender for the world heavyweight title here tonight. The current Australian heavyweight champion, the US heavyweight champion, the North American heavyweight champion, and the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. He is the Thunder from Down Under. We give you Stan the Man Well, the crowd love him. Stan the Man's a big favourite, Ray, uh, with kickboxing fans all over the world. 16 of his 21 bouts have been in the United States. He's fought in Las Vegas. He's fought uh, all over the world. And he's a terrific ambassador for Australia. In the United States of America, he is the World Heavyweight Champion. Here comes Maurice B. The Mean Machine. He fought in Tokyo just eight weeks ago. He took it out in five. Two kilos the heavier at 94. Three years the elder at 29 against 26 is Maurice Smith. Very confident man. And in the red gown, he moves towards the red corner. So it's Weighing in at 94 kilos, a professional fight record, 39-3-3, 28-5 knockout. He is the longest reigning heavyweight champion in the history of kickboxing. The champion for eight years. Ladies and gentlemen, from Washington in the United States of America, we give you the world heavyweight champion, Maurice Mean Machine Smith. We'd like you all to please give a rousing welcome to our own world champion. Welcome him into the ring, Mr. Jeffrey Fennick. Well, there's a reception and a half. And why wouldn't they? Absolutely robbed of his first, a fourth world title against Azuma Nelson recently is, at the Mirage Casino in Las Vegas. And still burning up inside over the raw deal that he got. Jeffrey Fennick, three times world title holder. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting set to rumble tonight for the WKA World Heavyweight Championship. 
Your referee for the last contest is Mr. Billy May, ladies and gentlemen. And we're ready to rumble for somebody promotions. So both fighters now being gloved. Stan the man there in uh, the black trunks with the gold sequins. Looking very much like a man who intends to come out of here as world heavyweight champion. At the end of 12 by 2. This say it shapes up as a classic contest, Ray. Uh, Maurice Smith, reputed to be the hardest leg kicker in the world. He's held the belt since 1983. I doubt in that time if he's come up against somebody as strong or as fast as Stan Longanides. And uh, talking to Stan at, after training the other night, he said to me, uh, I don't care if I come out of this fight with 100 stitches in my face, but one way or another I will walk out of this ring with the belt. Well, the preparation is behind them now. And uh, there's nothing more that Stan the Man Longanides can do. If he's prepared right, he gets his big chance right here and now in front of his own crowd at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. And I suppose that leads me to, to wonder just how Maurice Smith was lured down to Australia to defend his crown. Whichever way you look at that, it's good for kickboxing here down under. Maurice Smith is a, a true champion. He's probably the greatest heavyweight champion we've had in the sport of kickboxing. Maurice defends his title at least six times a year, right? All over the world, Japan, the Caribbean, United States, Mexico. He's a great champion. Here's the anthem. for the fighters Bill Miles last minute instructions telling the both boxers what he wants what he expects so they go back Smith to the red corner Longanides to the blue and we're set for the world heavyweight championship the WKA belt Waiting at the end of 12 by 2. First round. Front left kick by Smith. Longanides goes after him with that 
big flying left hook and he's pummeling Smith in the early part throwing plenty of leather backs off with a turning left kick Smith comes back with a turning left and a high left kick from Smith long and it is he bowled that one at him right kick by Smith Longanides tries to work his way away from that neutral corner. Stand the man, Black Trunks. Maurice Smith, world champion in the red with the goal piping. And this is exactly the start that Stan Longanides would have wanted for this fight, right? He needed to bounce out quick. Oh, big right hand. Big right hand by Stan the man. The champion went to the canvas. Big punch by Stan the man Longanides. Senses a chance. With me at uh, ringside is Trevor Munnery. Well, I'm not sure that Smith uh, was caught off balance or what, but it, it certainly sent him to the canvas. Well, I noticed Billy Mayles had no hesitation there, Ray, so if it was a slip, he wouldn't have put the count on him. So stand the man Longanit. He's getting away to a flying start. Oh, that left jab by Smith. It landed right on the jaw of Longanides. The punch to watch with Longanides is the left punch. Uh, it's an awesome left punch, and uh, if Maurice Smith sticks his chin out, then Stan the Man will give him an early shower. Left front kick by uh, Longanides, inside thigh of the left leg of Smith. This crowd, they're really pumping for Longanides. That was his round, round one. So one minute into that first round, a tremendous left lead by Longanides. It turned uh, the champion around fractionally and then he clubbed him with the right over the top. There it is, the big left. It was the one that did the damage. The right coming over the top was secondary and the champion went to the canvas 60 seconds into round one. Well, he'd have to be feeling pretty happy with himself, Trevor. That's been a great start by Stan, the man there. No doubt he's been pumped up by the big crowd in attendance here. Uh, if Stan can continue this for the rest of the fight, then the champion's in for a torrid evening. Seconds out. Second round. With Longanides taking the first round on a 10-point round, you'd have to score a 10-9 at least. It could have even been a 10-8 round to Longanides. It's a great start, Ray, a great start. Oh! Just a warning there for Longanides. Holding the, uh, the left-turning kick there of Smith. He held the leg. He looks confident, Longanides. He looks supremely confident coming into this fight. But he was saying that he would knock out the champion. Well, he very nearly did in the first round, although Smith has recovered very quickly, which tends to make me think that he, though he may have taken the punch, he, uh, he didn't take much punishment from it, really. And there's the turning right kick and then the left front kick by Longanides, and he works away with left-right combinations, fistic combination. Smith going in with a front kick to try and get in on top of Longanides who's much the shorter of the two, four inches shorter in fact, 6'2 as opposed to 5'10. There's the, uh, the overhead shot of this uh, fight looking down on the square ring. And a right turning kick by Smith. Longanides replies with the left lead. And the right again by Longanides. Stand the man. He's let go with the big right again, proving that it was no fluke. Smith in the neutral corner, covers up, tries to fight him off. Longanides bangs him with the right again. Smith gets back to centre ring for combat. And another big right by Longanides. Well, Longanides, he has um, now clubbed him with three big rights. And uh, I can hear Longanides' corner saying to him that he's hurt. Go after him, get him now. Coming up to the end of round two. Stan the man. He's quite happy to just feel his way through the early, the early rounds, though. Probably he's as surprised as anybody. Now, Smith starts to turn on some power. There's the bell at the end of the second. And again, another round for Stan the man, Longanides. But I thought he fought uh, that round particularly well. He had Maurice Smith in trouble. Rather than rush it, as a young, inexperienced fighter might have, he took his time, he landed the big hits, he took the points in the round, 
There's another 10 rounds to go in this fight, so Longanides is playing it very smart at the moment. He's been shaken, Ray. He's in a lot of trouble, Maurice Smith, and I doubt if he's had any fights where he's been in this much trouble early on. Start of round three. Oh, left lead and then the right over the top from Longanides. The right missed that time. He lets go with a flurry of left and right. They both miss. But Smith would have to be now very cautious about uh, what he does in this fight because Longanides, there he goes with the left again. Longanides uh, has got his confidence on a high now. He's coming down with a wave of confidence on Smith. Right side kick. Goes in. Left right. Double barreled from Longanides. Back to the neutral corner. And it's very much a case of uh, Longanides piling on points in the opening rounds. He's taken the first and second rounds. Knocked him down in the first. And very nearly did in the second. Turning left kick by Smith. No damage done. Longanides with that left. Twice he lets it go, twice with the left lead. Then he lets the big right go. Tries to get under the uh, under, underneath of the right uppercut. Doesn't find the mark. Cupping left by Longanides. Smith stalks him, takes him back to centre ring. There's a good shot of uh, the variation in heights here. Smith going after Longanides, but Longanides quite happy to be on the bicycle and then he springs out and launches an attack. Smith got off a good shot then. He missed though with the big uh, the big turning kick there with the right. Just as well he did too, because Longanides would have taken tremendous punishment from it. There's the bell at the end of the third. Better round for the champion. I thought, Ray, that there was a good steady round by Maurice Smith there. He took a lot of punishment off Stan the Man Longinides. I think he's withstood, withstood the early onslaught. And I think uh, what he'd be looking to do now is start to land a few of his own big punches and probably work on Longanides' legs a little bit too. Fourth round. Early seconds thereof. And Smith working Longanides back to Longanides' blue corner. And the chunkier Australian now gets him back to centre ring. Smith with some uh, blood coming from the mouth. Well, why wouldn't he be bleeding? He, he took a couple of very big rights in the opening rounds from Longanides. Smith continues to take the fight to Longanides in rounds three and four. They go back into the red corner. And Longanides able to turn uh, Smith around. No punches landed. Left kick by Smith. Longanides with a left right. Smith with the left lead. Then the, the left turning kick by Smith. Gets tied up on the ropes. Referee holds them back as Smith untangles that uh, long left leg. Oh, there goes the flying left hook from uh, Stan the Man. That's the Stan the Man's trademark, that flying left hook. Uh, the number of times that he's won his bouts by a KO with it. Big kick, big left kick then from um, Smith. Back in the neutral corner, he puts a bit of work in on Longanides. Just reminding him that he's the champion. And he's got Longanides back in the neutral corner. Gives him a, a good bit of punishment there. Several punches from Smith finding the mark. Big right kick by Smith. Good round for the champion. Round four, very much his at the moment. Longanides corner, just uh, becoming a little bit anxious for the first time in the fight. There's the end of the uh, fourth round, and a good round for Maurice Smith, the defending champion. So getting towards the end of round four, and the champion started to get on top of Longanides, a big left kick, and then he followed him into the neutral corner, and uh, he exchanged several punches in quick rapidity. He poked out the left lead and jabbed him in the chin a few times, then he ripped underneath with the left, came over the top with the right, and uh, 
it was there that we started to see that the champion was starting to fight back and uh, Longanides was in a bit of trouble as they came towards the end of round four. Ready for round five. <laughs> Up goes the champ. Stanley, stand the man, Longanides. Left front kick. Smith takes him straight back to his corner. Longanides with that powerful left hook. Missing the mark on that occasion. Quiet start to round five. Left turning kick by Smith. A round of caution for both fighters. They both go in at the same time. That left from Smith found the mark. So too did that from Longanides. Left turning kick. Good kick by Longanides. Jabs, uh, jabs out with two lefts, follows it with a right. Then a combination of punches, works underneath, tries to rip the uppercut. Through the guard of Smith. Front kick by Longanides. Oh, good left turning kick by Smith. Longanides bouncing off the ropes. Shall we dance? Left jab by Smith, good punch. Right kick by Smith, found the mark. Left front kick by Smith, also finding the mark. Longanides just bouncing away from that exchange. Smith comes in after uh, Longanides. Left front kick, takes him back to his own corner. Delivers a high right kick. Better round for Smith. Showing us um, some of the reasons why he's been world champion for eight years. I thought Longanides might have been revved right up by his early success and would have been taking the fight more to Smith than he has. It's been very much a case of Smith stalking Longanides. This is a very professional performance by Maurice Smith, Ray. What he's done, he's taken the early onslaught by Stan the Man. Now he's coming back and he's showing the challenger just why he is the uh, undefeated champion of the world. And he keeps putting the pressure back on Stan. In many of Stan's previous fights, the others have stood backwards. There's the bell, the end of round five. Another good round, I feel, for the champion. It was the kicking prowess of the champion that came through in this round. He caught uh, Longanides with a big left turning kick. It was just after this exchange, he ripped through with the right uppercut and then bang! He got him with that left turning kick and that really hurt Longanides. And this was to be the pattern of the fight as we came on down to the end of round five. Marie Smith, a bit of blood on the towel there. That's from um, a couple of wounds to the bottom lip but uh, only superficial. He's a very cool and calm fighter, Maurice Smith. Seconds out. Coming up to the round, it'll take us to the halfway mark. This is where I feel, Ray, that Stan the Man must get back that extra speed that he had in the initial rounds. Must get back on top of Maurice Smith, put the pressure back on the champion, try and land a couple of combinations, and if he can, set him up with a flying left hook. Two left turning kicks by Smith to open round number six. I'm Both scoring kicks. I'm surprised Stan hasn't worked more on Maurice's legs, too. Maurice is a big man. If you can uh, take his legs out, slow him down a bit, and make him an easier target. He might have been flushed with the success of a couple of big, uh, big shots he got off in those two opening rounds and forgot about the idea of maybe taking those legs away from Smith. Yes, I noticed in his corner just then, Shuki Rom, one of the trainers from the Jet Center, his leg trainer, was saying, saying to Stan, work on his legs, work on his legs. And at the moment, Stan's concentrating most of his efforts on the top part of the body. That was a good kick then, but I think he's going to need to do a lot more of those to slow this man down. Longanides in this round, in contrast to the last couple of rounds, he has taken the fight up to Smith. He stalked him a bit in this round. Going in there, looking for work. Smith has got off uh, quite a few shots with both left and right kicks. Longanides propelling himself off the canvas with that punch, but it failed to find the mark. He tries to rake him off his balance with a right kick. Almost uh, brought himself undone. And there's that left again by Longanides. Left-right combination, good punches. The corner of Longanides imploring him to go on with it. He does the spade work but doesn't want to follow it up. 
I think he's very cautious, Ray. Some of those big hits from Maurice Smith in the last couple of rounds have found their mark, and they've certainly taken their toll on the challenger. But as you said, he's going to scream at him. Move forward. When you have him in trouble, finish him. There's the bell. We're halfway. Round six is down. I notice, Ray, they're now starting to work on uh, a cut above on Longinetti's eye. Neither fighter is known as a bleeder, so neither fighter has been cut a great deal in their, in their previous fights. Uh, that could be an indication, as I said before, that he has taken some big hits from the champion. And uh, I noticed his corner were doing a lot of work on that eye then. So round seven. And Longanidi is getting some attention during the break to uh, just a nick, I would suggest to you, over the left eye. And uh, at the halfway mark, I would suppose this fight is very close to even Stephen. So a tentative opening to round number seven. Turning left kick by Smith. Longanides goes after him with left-right combination and a left kick. Takes him to the neutral. But Smith hanging all over Longanides. So they come back to centre ring. Smith now tries to club uh, Longanides with the right. Left kick by uh, Smith. Takes him in towards the neutral corner, towards Longanides. There goes the launching left. The big left that... Uh, Worked for him early, so too did the right, but they haven't found the mark in recent rounds. Left front kick by Smith, turning kick by Longanides, and a good combination of punches there by Longanides. They were good punches, they all found the mark. Smith takes him back though to the ropes. Smith now trying to rip that right uh, underneath the guard of Longanides. Both boxers with uh, left turning kicks. They clinch it in centre ring. Billy Mayo's the man in charge. Smith goes after Longanides. Oh, good right turning kick by the champion. Right on the jaw. Big kick by Smith. Longanides tries to reply, but I'm pretty sure that kick by Smith hurt him. Smith lying all over Longanides. Ripping away with uh, that right. Longanides gamely tries to fight his way away from the ropes. Tries to take the champion's legs from under him. They're back in Longanides' corner. Smith tries to pummel away with the left and right. Good round for the champion. And there it is, the bell ending round seven. Well, there was a very big left hand Midway through this round from Stan the Man, this is it. It comes from the canvas. He lets go. He absolutely leaves the canvas himself, and he just picks off Smith with the uh, the looping left to the chin. And it might be a sign of the times that Longanides is coming back. The ability to kick with both feet was depicted in this round. Watch for this big right-turning kick from the champion. And it's uh, the ability to let go with kicks like that that uh, really is starting to have its effect on uh, Stan the Man Longanides. I don't think the Longanides camp would be happy uh, with the way the fight's going, Ray. This is a fight that suits Maurice Smith's style. He's a walk-up type of fighter. He'll get in close, he'll work away with his hands, step back and then let go with a nice big right kick. At the moment, Stan the Man, he should be moving a little bit more around the ring, trying to make the champion work a little more. The champion's a bigger fighter. Maybe he can tire him out. Uh, at the moment, Stan the Man is sort of standing still a little bit, and he's copying a lot of the punches and the kicks that Maurice is throwing. If you stand in front of Maurice Smith, sooner or later you'll get hurt. Round number eight. Still the fight. Fairly evenly spread. Possibly the champion just in front on points. Round eight now. Right turning kick by Smith, and then the reply came from the gloves of Longanides. Longanides gets off a left. He goes in with the right turning kick. Takes him back to the neutral corner. Longanides bangs in the right again. Smith trying to fight his way out of that neutral corner. Rips him with the right. But Longanides is wheeling and dealing at the moment. But Smith comes away from the neutral corner. Gets the uh, turning left kick in. 
And now he's got Longanides back on the ropes. So a good passage for Longanides, but then Smith able to fight his way out of it. Yeah, that was a good recovery by the champion there, Ray. He was in all sorts of trouble. Good left kick by Longanides and a similar reply from Smith. Oh, that right might have hurt the champion. Comes back, though, with a big left turning kick. And again, Longanides standing there, taking it. Now the right kick to that thigh muscle. Longanides is soaking up plenty of punishment. Smith has delivered uh, plenty of kicks to both those legs of uh, the challenger. There's another one. Big right kick. And they hurt. Longanides now. The feet firmly planted on the canvas. Not moving, not doing what he was doing in the early rounds. In fact, he looks very tired. Smith comes in. He tries to get him away with a front kick, Longanides, but Smith is willing and dealing out the punishment as we come to the end of round eight. And uh, Smith landing punches at will as the bell sounds the end of round eight, easily around for the champion. There was a good sequence in this round for uh, Stan the Man Longanides. That kick by Smith, it found the mark, but it seemed to spur Longanides and he went after Smith, and that's what his corner's been screaming for uh, for quite a few rounds now. He clubbed him with the uh, the right over the top, and then he launched off with the left, chased him and kicked him with the right to the midsection, and then he pummeled him over in the neutral corner. Good passage in the fight there for Stan the Man Longanides. Round number nine now. Four rounds to go. Will this be the last round? Smith really on top of Longanides at the end of round number eight. Longanides, Stan the man, his supporters calling out, dig deep Stan. Smith has kept working away with those um, turning kicks. Most of the thighs, that one was up top to the jaw, and another one to that left thigh muscle of Longanides. Maurice Smith from Washington State, 29 years of age, world heavyweight kickboxing champion, and he's dealing it out now. Longanides taking plenty of punishment in the last three rounds. He's in trouble, the challenger. Tries to fend him off with a front kick. They're back in uh, Smith's corner. He just delivers punishment with front kicks, turning kicks, high kicks. Longanides stands there, takes it. Smith blood coming from the face of Longanides now as the, those gashes open further and the referee taking Longanides to the neutral corner getting the doctor to have a look at him Billy Miles asking the question should he let it continue I think they're concerned about the cut over the left eye of Stan Longanides he's in trouble the challenger he's in real trouble here Ray he must move, he must start to fight back here. Well, with all the all the kicks he's taken to the thigh muscles, his legs have become like two stumps now. They're not moving at all. Not even a shadow of the fighter we saw in the opening couple of rounds. And every time he takes a, a kick to those thighs, you can see him, he, he winces with the pain, Trevor. Yes, he sure does. His legs have got to be hurting at the moment. Maurice Smith did the, the good work in the middle part of the fight. He worked on Longinides' legs. Uh, Stan the Man preferred to move up high. And I think it's now paying off for the champion. The end of round nine. Well, there he is after looking as though he might have to hand over that title in the early rounds. He's now well on top. And it's probably a question of whether or not Longanides can see the bout out. Three rounds to go. They're slow to get out. out of Stan the Man's corner that time too, trying to give the challenger a little bit extra time. Well, Smith goes straight after him. Longanides tries to get the big left on. Smith over the ropes. Comes back up rather gracefully. Acknowledges the crowd. Goes back. Center ring now. And Smith scoring at will. Longanides trying to get a front kick on. Maurice Smith, high left kick. 
Longanides gets a few punches off, but then he stands there and waits for Smith to come back to him. I don't think that he's got the power in those legs to go after Smith. Oh, Smith tried to get off a, a kick. It missed the mark and Longanides clubbed him. The champion, he's in trouble in the neutral corner. Longanides trying to get a shot on him. The crowd roars for Stan the man Longanides. But Maurice Smith comes away from it. He doesn't look as though he's too hurt by it. Now, Maurice Smith was very smart there. He covered up in the corner. Most of Stan the man's blows went on his gloves. Don't be surprised if Maurice Smith unleashes his own barrage as we come up at the end of round 10. Longanides corner encouraging their boy, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of petrol there. He had his chance right there, but he couldn't go on with it. Smith comes back now. Big left kick right over the top. Stan could be in real trouble if he doesn't get his hands up here, Ray, because he's a sitting target for that right leg. Of the oh, defense. big left kick again by Smith. Trevor Munnery giving us co-commentary in this fight. The heavyweight champion, Maurice Smith, the Australian challenger, Stan the man. That's the end of round 10. Well, this is an example of a kick that goes horribly wrong for Smith. He lets go, Stan the man hurdles the kick and then clubs him over the top with the left and rips away with the right. And it was in this section of the round that Longanides got on top of Smith. He banged him with a couple of big rights and another one down below. And over the top with the left, it was a very good passage for Stan the man, the Australian challenger. It's pretty obvious what Maurice Smith does. Slow him down around the legs and he, he really can't come and get you. Here they come now, round 11. Maurice Smith. In front on points, one would have to think. Delivering that uh, big turning left kick again. Longanides goes after him. Smith makes him miss. Smith uh, very light on his feet still. I think if Stan the Man is going to take the title, he's got to do it in this round. I don't think you'll put Maurice Smith around, uh, away in the 12th round. It's got to be this round. But once again, the champion's right on top of the challenger. He's just waiting for Stan the Man to hit him. He blocks it, and he just lets him have a couple more. There's that uh, left that Longanides likes to throw. But he's not really uh, following up the foundation. Big right kick by Smith right over the top. Longanides bleeding from that cut above the left eye. It's already had a medical inspection. Round 11, coming up to the end of it. Not a bad round for Longanides, but he's giving, I believe, too big a start. He's and got he's going to have to get that shot off that you're talking about, Trevor, to win the fight. That's my opinion and yours, obviously. Yes, I have Maurice Smith well ahead on points. But I think Stan the man, he's got a huge heart. He's giving it everything he has. Uh, I don't think you can ask anything more from this young Australian challenger. And I think the big crowd here, they're right behind him, but I think they're now settling in. They're seeing a real champion in action. This is a professional effort here by Maurice Smith. He's really carved Stan the man up over the last few rounds. Oh, big left kick. Left turning kick. Smith trying to get a shot, a rip through the cover there of Longanides. Then he gives him a what you might call a good old-fashioned kick in the pants. Gets off the kick again, does the champion, and again. Longanides, he's going to know he's been in a fight when he gets up to walk on those legs tomorrow. There's the bell, that's the end of 11. The Aussies hanging in there, stand the man. Well, he's certainly looking the worst for wear there, Ray Warren. Uh, 11 rounds against Maurice Smith, I'm not surprised. I think Maurice is hitting with just about everything that he could possibly hit. Stan the man's taken it well, I thought. I think he's put up a great performance. But once again, you saw the, the sheer ring knowledge of Maurice Smith there, right into the 11th round. He's still working on Stan the man's legs, still slowing the challenger down. Maurice Smith, on the other hand, he doesn't look like he's been in much of a fight, really. He looks very cool, calm and collected, sitting there in the corner. Six. Seconds out. Last round. World Heavyweight Championship. And stand the man, Longanides. Behind on points on our card to the champion, Maurice Smith. Longanides put him down in the first round. And it was in the early two rounds, the early rounds, that we thought Longanides 
may have been bringing the title down here to Australia, but Smith, like a true champion, has come back and piled on the points. Big left kick by Smith, right over the top by Smith. And uh, the champion, he'd have to know he's in front on points, I would suggest. Longanides in this last uh, round of this 12-round contest is going to have to pull a tremendous punch out of his kit if he's going to put Marie Smith down and out. Smith still looking cool, calm and collected. He's been in bother a couple of times, but he's always came, came back composed and uh, seemingly taking up the ascendancy. Well, he's certainly not taking any chances in the final round, Ray. He bounced out straight away, went on the attack against Stan the Man. And as you can see, he's continually worn the challenger down. He's a very good champion, this one. Left turning kick by, uh, by Marie Smith. Good scoring, uh, good scoring shot. Gets off that right, that right kick three times in this final round in the last few seconds. Big kicks. And Longanides unable to move those legs of his have taken an absolute thumping in this fight big left kick by smith the champion really letting the young australian know who is the champ and uh, he's used both left right kick left and right punches but his kicking has been uh, the feature of the fight now he delivers another big right kick longanides hanging in there digging as deep into his courage as he can but smith takes him back to the corner the bell ends the, re the world heavyweight championship is over 12 by 2 we wait for the decision maurice smith back to his corner he'd have to feel pretty happy with himself stand the man long than it is mike is proud mate proud to be australian that's it mate the seconds just uh, trying to clean up the, the gash above the eye of Stan the Man Longanides. You can hear Nick Kinos, the manager of Stan the Man in his corner, telling Stan you should be proud, you're a proud young Australian, and he's quite right. This is a great effort by this young fighter, and uh, I hope, you know, all Australians really get behind him in the years to come, because he's got a big future, Stan the Man, and he's not down and out by a long way. That was a great fighting effort, and I doubt if there'd be any other heavyweight in the world that would have gone the distance tonight with Maurice Smith. He looked in great form. He certainly, his kicks were sharp, his hand combinations were on target, and he wore the challenger down. It was a professional effort by a great champion. The world heavyweight title has been decided by a split decision. Well, there's a surprise, Ray, a split decision. The judges scoring 117, 111, 114-113, 114-115. And the winner is in the red corner, Rory Smith Machine Smith. The main machine. And still, still the world heavyweight champion, world Maurice heavyweight Smith. Captain. I've got to be honest, Maurice and uh, in being Smith. that way, I can't believe a split decision. No, I'm surprised, Ray. I had Maurice Smith well in front on points. It'd be interesting to find out whether it was one of the American judges. We've had some experience with them in recent times. Their scoring can sometimes be a little erratic, but I don't think there's any doubt. Murray Smith won that fight. He won it well. He's a great champion, but at the same time, he was up against a great challenger from Australia. Ah, oh, tremendous effort by Longanides. No question about that. Well, there he is now with the promoter of the fight, Glenn Coxon with the trophy and here stand the man I, it's a policy of my own that win lose or draw i always say the same thing and that's, I'd like to thank everyone that's come out to support me the people in sydney have been very hospitable <clears throat> the people in sydney have made me feel really much at home i've been here over four weeks i want to thank all the people that come out from melbourne there's over two thousand people here from melbourne Thank you all, and just as always, I'd like to thank the people involved with me, the whole team. Dana Goodson, Shuki for coming out here from the United States to help me. Leroy, Billy out there from City Gym, my manager, Nick Kennis, who I love very much. My family, everyone out there, I want to thank. Uh, whether I win or lose, I always give the glory to my Heavenly Father, and this is the first time that I've lost. 
and I won't forget you, Lord. You're still number one in my books. And if you can see on my left arm, I'm wearing a, a black band. My dream tonight was to win the title and dedicated to a friend of mine that passed away about a week and a half ago. A friend of mine named Steve Demiris that had a heart transplant and had complications and he passed away. I know you're watching, Steve. I did my best. I hope you're proud of me. I'm sure he is. Now you know why Maury Smith is a heavyweight champion for over eight years. I told him that I was going to give him a war. I told him I had my guns loaded to give him a best shot. Give me a war. <laughs> Maury Smith is a guy that I've idolised as a heavyweight and I gave him my best shot. I hope you guys appreciate the effort that I put in. Thank you. We do. And I think so too. So too does Maurice Smith. He's a fine young spokesman for the sports down on the needies. I'm glad you're, I hope you're happy because it was an exciting fight on my part. And Stan, you deserve all the best and hopefully we'll meet again and, because I'm going to keep it for a few more years, buddy, so. <laughs> but you fought a hell of a fight. And it was, for me it was close, it could have went either way. And like I said, I'm glad that you fans came out and supported the sport because we, we feel we're worth just as much as boxing. And if you think so as well, keep coming to the games, the fights, and we'll eventually we'll make the big money the boxers make. And Jeff Finnick, Jeff Finnick, where you at? How you like it? Not like you, but we try just as hard as you guys. You do. Good luck to you in your future, buddy. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed the action from down here at the Sydney Entertainment Centre, and uh, a big night ending in a big fashion for the heavyweight champion of the kickboxing world, Maurice Smith from Washington State. And it's not hard to see why he has held that championship for something like eight years. And as he said, he's not about to give it up easily. Our man, Stan the Man Longanides, game, gallant in defeat. And I'm sure everybody that saw his performance tonight agree that he is a worthy contender for the World Heavyweight Championship. It didn't come tonight. It might come another day down the track. I'm Ray Warren on behalf of Trevor Munnery and the whole crew here from the Sydney Entertainment Centre. Thank you for joining us and good night.